You create law, which isn't your function, uh, and then you come before Congress and you say that everything is fine. Well, we've been to Yuma, Arizona, sir, um, and we've seen the devastation down there. We've talked to people. Seventy sheriffs just last year said that there is no border at all. We simply have no border left in Arizona, New Mexico, Southern California, and Texas. That's the National Sheriff's Association. Alejandro Mayorkas humiliated by Representative Russell Fry on border crisis and unlawful immigration. Let's watch this Capitol Hill clip. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, I have listened both in here and in, in my office today, uh, your testimony uh, before this committee. And I think the frustration that I have as the cleanup crew at the very end of this committee is that you seem to ver answer very eloquently all the questions that the other side of the aisle pose. But when posed with questions, specific questions about the border on this side of the aisle, you seem to not have, you seem to dance and dodge, as Ms. Hageman talked about, uh, the true answers that you, you talk about, uh, you, you filibuster, if you will, what people really are asking. And these, are, these aren't questions that, that are hatched out of uh, some think tank. These are questions that our citizens have because they see what's going on. Mallorcas again. This sounds like it's going to be good or at least extremely entertaining and frustrating. You know, what's re remarkable to me since day one of this administration, you've terminated construction of the border wall. You restricted the ability of immigration officers to deport aliens who violate U.S. law. You terminated the MPP, the Remain in Mexico policy, despite people on the ground talking about how successful that it was. You abused parole authority to release illegal aliens en masse into the United States. Um, and, and creating categorical, categorical parole programs in violation of the ANA's case-by-case -case basis. You refuse to follow federal law requiring aliens to be detained during the pendency of their asylum proceedings. You terminated asylum cooperative agreements with Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. You refuse to comply with the provisions of the INA that require the detention of asylum seekers. You cut, out, you cut out immigration judges, ICE attorneys, and the process of the asylum system itself. You support sanctuary city, city policies by giving them grants. You implemented until it was enjoined a 100-day moratorium on alien removals. You have misused, as been talked about here, the CBP-1 app that has institutionalized mass parole and release policies in this country. It's been described as a shell game. Pretty pretty fairly stated that you otherwise shift things around, you, you create definitions within your department that you think that are appropriate, you create law, which isn't your function, uh, and then you come before Congress and you say that everything is fine. Well, we've been to Yuma, Arizona, sir, um, and we've seen the devastation down there. We've talked to people. Seventy sheriffs just last year said that there is no border at all. We simply have no border left in Arizona, New Mexico, Southern California, and Texas. That's the National Sheriff's Association. You've been held to account by courts. Texas v. Biden, DHS's position, quote, position that the crisis at the border is not largely of their own making because of their more lenient detention policies is divorced from reality and belied by the evidence. Florida versus the United States in the nor Northern District of Florida, quote, the Biden administration have effectively turned the southwest border into a meaningless line in the sand and little more than a speed bump for aliens flooding into the country by prioritizing alternatives for detention over actual detention and by releasing more than a million aliens into the country. Uh, real quick, let's play a video. Crisis on the border that just keeps getting worse. These are live pictures of Del Rio, Texas. Uh town that borders Mexico, where almost 9,000 migrants are currently camping out. Government data showing there were more than 220,000 encounters with migrants along the border last month, the highest number in 22 years. Law enforcement leaders from federal, state, and local agencies announced Tuesday an unprecedented two-month-long fentanyl enforcement surge along the southwest border that resulted in the seizure of more than 4,700 pounds of fentanyl. Fentanyl being pushed through the desert around El Paso is up more than 355% compared to last year. For the first time, fentanyl is being smuggled between the ports of entry. There have been more than 200 people on the right, FBI terror like crisis on the border that just keeps getting worse. So, if the wall protects our country from all these drugs that's being smuggled, let's do it. Just because we have a wall doesn't mean we won't let anyone in.
The numbers don't lie. 5.6 million illegal immigration or illegal alien encounters, 1.5 million known gotaways, more than 2.2 million illegal immigrants, aliens into this country, meaning that 3.6 million illegal aliens are in this country since the start of your tenure. That's astronomical. 160 countries, the people on the terror watch list that we know about, 140 just this year, it's at an all-time high. So, look, this, 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 doesn't, this doesn't lie. These are the stats, Mr. Secretary. And so you come up here and you blame the former president, and they say that they've gutted the immigration system. You blame Congress for not acting. But you know what? These numbers weren't here for Obama. They weren't here for Trump. But they seem to be here for you. So you like to blame other people for your failures in not doing your job. And quite frankly, the American people want to know, how qualified are you to even carry out your mission? Because everybody else seems to indicate from local law enforcement to sheriffs to ranchers. Mayorkas looks so uncomfortable being told he's not doing his job. Actually, I'm not sure if it's discomfort or smugness. What do you think? To farmers, to citizens on the border, when I ask them, is the border more secure? They say resoundingly no. And that's on your watch, sir. Without a yield. Gentleman's time has expired. Gentleman yields back. The gentleman, if we could uh, maybe just wait till the sign's taken down there, Mr. Moore, and then we'll let you have your five minutes with, uh, with the secretary. The gentleman from Alabama is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here today. I, I'm certainly appalled at what's happening at the southern border, and I know my constituents are, too. Um, your border policies make every state a border state. And uh, I, I said my constituents are appalled, but what's happening? But I know a family who has personally been suffering the consequences of, of your actions. And uh, in my district, the second congressional districts in Alabama, the Tulsa County Sheriff's Department arrested Grevy Zavala, a 29-year-old illegal alien from Honduras, for the rape of a teenage girl in Prattville, Alabama, in a restaurant. The interesting thing is Mr. Zavala identified, I guess, as a minor is what I'm being told, but he was a 29-year-old. And, uh, Mr. Secretary, why do you think it is, and I've been to the border a few times myself, that we're finding so many IDs thrown down south of the border, just, it, it's almost like if these people were coming here for, to apply for asylum, they'd want us to know who they were and what they were up to. But for some reason, ID after ID are just piling up south of the U.S. border. Why do you think that might be? Um, Congressman, uh, first of all, um, very sorry, of course, to learn of the tragedy uh, that uh, occurred that was inflicted on a constituent uh, of yours. I understand that, Mr. Mayor. And let me say this, sir. Um, we've been apologizing to a lot of people for a long time, at least in the last few months, last few years. Even when the other party was in charge, they had the White House, the House, and the Senate. And we're continuing apologizing to parents for losing their children to fentanyl and for people getting raped in restrooms. And for DUIs are people who are killing people with cars who have no driver's license. And I understand the apologies, but my people, the constituents in this country, are getting tired of apologies and they want action. And so who's responsible for the death or let's say the rape of this 14-year-old? Is that you, Mr. Mayorkas, or is that President Biden? Or is it Congress? Who's responsible for that? Congressman. There you have it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below.